Let's review. Previously, we learned that God asked Moses to go to Pharaoh to ask Pharaoh to let his people, the Israelites, go. Pero on sige buhat ni Pharaoh, Pharaoh hardened his heart. Again and again, that's why the Lord sent um, various signs and wonders, plagues, okay, to serve as a judgment on the gods of Egypt, as well as to display his power. Now, so far, we have studied uh, the first nine plagues. No, So the tenth plague, the Lord threatened Pharaoh that he's going to kill all the firstborn sons and livestock in Egypt. We're now in Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. So if you have your own Bible, please open and uh, read with me, no? English or Binisaya. So in Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of the year. Just for you to know, the Jewish nation, they have two calendars. Meron silang civil calendar, na po sila ay, uh, religious calendar. Ang civil calendar nila is from September to October, and religious calendar, magsugod na siya sa March, April. Okay? Yung civil calendar, magsugod September to October, and then religious calendar, uh, March to April. So karon, kaning event in uh, Exodus 12, this happened in the seventh month of the civil year, uh, this around September to October. Tapos, ingon ng ginoo, this will be the first month of your religious calendar. They call it Abib during the pre-exile, and then pro post-exile, they call it Nisan. So by the way, yung mga Jews, they follow lunar calendar. So they have their own calendar. Now, in verse 3, tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. So, so, they, so the instruction of the Lord is that on the 10th day, magdala sila og mga uh, lamb no, sa ilang panimalay. So, itong cute lamb, dalon sa ilang balay, of course, the the, the lamb will be considered part of the family, so mga, the, the kids will play with it as their pet. Eventually, they will form a band. Sa 10th day, and then on the 14th day, kailangan pat yun. So, it is as if it's going to be a sacrifice because meron na silang mga banding with the, the lamb. No? And the way they kill the lamb is that they slit the throat, uh, ang liog nila, and then they will drain the blood into a basin. And then... Uh, and of course, the kids will ask their parents, Oh, why do we do that? Luin naman kayo ang lamb. And then that's the time for the parents to explain to their kids uh, the significance. No? Kasi God is holy, and then kailangan niya ng sacrifice for our sins. So that's a good time for them to tell the kids about God's um, requirement for sacrifice and atonement. Ang sinasabi ng atonement, kabayaran sa sala. Atonement for our sins. Then in uh, verse 4, If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. Siyempre, ang lamb, dako kayo, dili mahurot sa usaka pamilya, so they will have to share with their neighbors. And later, there was a tradition which says that uh, a one, one lamb uh, at, at least 10 people will partake, will eat it. No? So 10 people. During the Passover, remember that Jesus celebrated um, you know, the Passover sila with his disciples. So all of them share in one lamb. One lamb. Okay? So one lamb, but it's good for 10 people at least. No? It could be more. Depende sa kung kusog mo nga o nadili. Okay. And then verse 5, the animals you choose must be year-old males without defect and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. So, ang requirement, dapat one year old, okay? And then, without defect, will I, will I uh, know nothing uh, per perfect, bale? And you may take from sheep or goats. So, usually we think that uh, Passover lamb, lamb lang, but uh, nakabotang sa Bible, gi allow yung sheep or goat, even mga kambing, no? Pero, um, later tradition, mga uh, they're, they're, naghimo silang tradition na gilimit lang ang choice to lamb only. Okay? 
And then, uh, let's discuss ang si significance nga no kailangan ng one year old. Because uh, study shows that yung mga lamb, for the first year of their life, ang mortality rate nila, mga 20 to 50 percent, mamatay ang mga sheep. Okay? For various reasons. So, after one year, more or less, di na hindi siya mamatay. So, mas healthy na na sila. So, the sheep is considered uh, to be in its prime after one year. So, dapat prime, the best, okay? That's why after one year. And then, the God, and God requires the lamb without defect. You can see that in Leviticus 22, verse 22. Nakabutang sa Leviticus, Do not offer to the Lord the blind, the injured, or the maim. Or may piang, bawal na siya. Or anything with warts, or festering, or running sores. Because the Lord wants the best. Kailangan perfect. And, and we know that Jesus, diba? John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God. And Jesus is perfect. Because nung na siya dere sa kalibutan, he had no sin. He knew no sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Wala siya nakasala sa 1 Peter 2.22 He is the perfect Lamb of God. So, importante sa ginoo, dapat perfect. So, in other words, si Jesus lang ang mag-fit sa kriteria na uh, perfect Lamb of God. Kasi, kita tanan, na, makakasala. No? So, nobody can be the perfect Lamb of God except Jesus because He was uh, uh, he was uh, he, he was a made man. He was incarnated as a man, and he is perfect, no? Perfect, siya. And then in verse six, take care of them until the fourteenth day of the month. So they they will have to take care of the lamb, no? Because tenth day, dalon sa balay. So for four days, they will have to take care of the lamb. And then uh, until the fourteenth day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Kasi pasabot ng twilight. Ang twilight, kung siya, it's between sunset and full night. So mga, mga 6 o'clock, ganun, mga 6 kapin. Ana. On the 14th day of the month, the lamb was killed and then its blood will be applied to the lintel and side posts of the door. So may mga ano, uh, they will apply the blood. And we know that it was the blood of the lamb which saved the Israelites. Kasi ba? as we will learn later on, the angel of the Lord passed by. Kung nakita niya ang blood, dili sila patyon ang mga Israelites. Okay, let's go to verse 7. Then, they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lamb. So, ito yun. So, they will put blood. So, what's the significance aning mga, ang blood, ng Passover blood? No? Kasi si Jesus is the Lamb of God and it's necessary for Him to die. Kasi yung dugo niya, His blood will be the one uh, to save us. Because without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness. So si Jesus, siya ang substitute. He died on the cross and He suffered the judgment for our sins. No, To be effective, remember, to be effective, kailangan um, they have to apply the blood sa doorposts. So in other words, ang salvation ng mga Israelites sa paso, sa, uh, during that time, Exodus, dili automatic. Dili porke na Israelites ka, luwas na kadayon. They have to do something. They have to uh, kill the lamb, take the blood, and put it on the door frames. They have to act by faith. Dapat mo, nasi lili buhaton. So dili, uh, kung, in other words, kung wala nila gisunod ang kagustuhan ng ginoon na butangan dugo sa door frames, they will all be killed. So it's by faith also, no? By faith. That is why salvation is by faith. By grace, uh, it's by grace through faith, no? Through their faith, they believe in what God is telling them, so they obeyed the Lord. So when the angel of the Lord saw the blood on the door frames, so sabi ni, sabi ni, sabi ni Lord, I will pass over you. So, yun, I will pass over you. So the Passover in Exodus it foreshadows the sacrifice of Jesus. So yung Passover na nitabo sa Exodus, it symbolizes what will, what will come in the future, which is the death of Jesus on the cross for our sins. Okay, so let's go to verse 8. Verse eight. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs, herbs and bread made 
without yeast. Okay. So nga no, kaniman ang gipakaon sa kanila. Well, well the, may mga simbolism ito eh. Yung bitter herbs, uh, this will remind the Jews of their bitter suffering in Egypt. Kaya di ba naglisod sila, nahimo silang slaves in Egypt? So ito yung uh, mag-remind sa ilaha. And then, um, they will also eat bread without yeast. So ito tinatawag nila matso. It's bread without yeast. It symbolizes that they were in a hurry. Nagmamadali sila. Wala na sila time na na mag ano um mag bake og bread no so ito yan matso the yeast symbolizes uh, impurity or pollution um actually makita nato ni eh, sa new testament di ba before uh, uh when jesus went to the temple before the passover gipahawa niya yung mga money changers di ba so para niya these are corruptions happening in the temple so gi drive out niya and then the bible also describe the yeast as uh, yeast as uh, symbolizing impurity because makita nato sa 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 to 8 ingon ni Pablo get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are for Christ our passover lamb has been sacrificed therefore let us keep the festival not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So the, the Israelites believe, kaning yeast, this symbolizes impurity. And the debating on Jesus, be careful of the yeast of the Pharisees, of the impurities. No? Okay, let's go to verse 9. Uh, ingon ni Lord, do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water. But roast it over a fire with the he head, legs, and internal organs. So, ang pagkaon nila sa Passover meal, kailangan i-roast. So, dili pwede i-boil. Why? Kasi ang pag-boil, dugay kaayo. Since nagmamadali sila, kailangan i-roast. And then they have to roast everything. Head, legs, and internal organs. And in verse 10, Do not leave any of it until morning. If some of it is left till morning, you must burn it. Why? Well, the Bible does not explain nga no, kailangan i-dispose -dis nila. But I think, perhaps, itong Passover lamb, sacred, very special. Para lang na sa Passover meal. So, kailangan, they have to destroy it. no? They have to dispose of it kung dilit nila mahurot makaon. Okay, let's go to verse 11. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it with haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So, kani gibutang ni Lord, unsa dapat ang get up nilang suot nila when, while they're eating the Passover. As you know, during those times, mga tao naka-robe, diba? Naka-robe sila. So, unsa pa sabot aning uh, uh, tuck your uh, tuck your cloak into your belt. So, I have a picture here. So, ito yung ano, itsura nila, diba? Naka-robe sila. So, kailangan iangat nila yung robe nila and then they will have to tuck it in their belt so that they could run. Kasi pag inanataas ang robe nila, they cannot run, right? So that is what God meant. They have to tuck their cloak into their belt and then dapat nakasandals na sila and then the staff is in their hand so that kaon sila dali and then lakaw na dayon. Kung baga nakaready na sila to run. So that is how they should dress, okay? So in verse 12, on that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn on, of both people and animal. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. So sabi niya, that night, pat yun niya tanan ng mga firstborn, people and animals. And then sabi ni Lord, I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. So, for the past several weeks, we have studied all the gods and goddesses of Egypt. So we have Hapi, remember him, the god of flood, and then we have Apis, Osiris, the god of Nile, Canum, the gar guardian of the Nile, Heket, the frog goddess, Ulunya, frog, Lawas na babae, and then we have uh, Set, the god of the desert, Geb, the earth god, you watch it, the fly god, and then we have Hathor, Apis, god of the livestock, Sekhmet, god of health and disease. Sunu, pestilence god, 
Isis, god of healing, Nut, sky goddess, Min, god of crops, Ra, Horus, the most powerful god nila, Ra, the sun god, and many others. God is bringing judgment on these gods, and we all know who are behind these gods. These are demonic, no? demonic spirits. God is bringing judgment on these gods of Egypt to let the Egyptians know that there is none like Yahweh. Walay Dios na parehas ni Yahweh. God is unique. God is all-powerful. Now, let's go to verse 13. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Here's the illustration. The angel of the Lord passed by the house of the Jews. Kumakita niya yung the blood on the doorpost, the angel of the Lord will pass through them. So you can see that God requires the offering of lamb. Kailangan ay dugo. The blood of the animal was the means of their deliverance. Pag makita ng ginoo na ang dugo, the Lord will pass over them. So, napunay significant sa ato ato day, no? The blood of Jesus, okay? Through the blood of Jesus, di ba? We believe we accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. It's through the blood of Jesus na kita maluwas. And when the day comes, no? Pagbalik ng ginoo, makita niya na kita, gidawat nato si Jesus Kristo, He will pass over us. He will save us. Where, whereas, atong mga uban na wala gidawat si Jesus Kristo, they will be condemned, they will be sentence no for to eternal death and then in verse 14 this is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come you shall celebrate it as a festival to the lord a lasting ordinance so in other words ingon na ginoo na kaning passover dapat i commemorate ninyo sige ninyo buhaton every year for generations to generations aron mahinumduman ninyo ang naitabo. So, actually, um, up to this day, the Jews uh, are celebrating the Passover every year. No, It's a family event. No, Tanang mga family nila na sila. So, one, once a year, they will all travel back to Israel to be together or to go to, with their family and then they will celebrate the Passover meal. Up to this day, ito yung mga pagkaon nila during Passover. So, may mat Matso, may pot potatoes, may bitter herbs, and then may wine, grape juice, napoy itlog, no? napoy charoset, napoy meat, napoy oil. So, ito yung mga menu nila sa Passover meal. And they call that seder, S-E-D-E-R, the seder, the Passover meal. And then the Passover was celebrated on the 14th day of the month. And then after the Passover, the following day, and for the next seven days, ang ilang Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, let's go to verse 15. For seven days, you are to eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses. For whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the seventh will be cut off from Israel. So very specific ang kagustuhan ni Ginoon na dapat tangtangon nila tanan mga yeast sa ilang panimalay. No? This symbolizes uh, that they have to be pure, they have to be sanctified, they have to remove the, any impurities from their houses. And then, sabi niya, on verse 16, on the first day, hold a sacred assembly and another one on the seventh day. Do not work at all on these days except to prepare food for everyone to eat. And that is all you may do. Let's go to verse 17. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for generations to come. In verse 18, In the first month, you are to eat bread made without yeast, from the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day. Okay, so the Feast of Unleavened Bread reminds us that God's, God wants us to live holy life. Kasi dapat, you have to remove the impurities, the, the yeast. So ito, may mga symbolism itong mga, mga festival nila. Okay? But of course, as Christians, we don't, uh, we don't follow this anymore. Kasi ang mga nagsunod ane, mga, mga Jews, no? Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread. So kita, we don't 
follow this. But it is good to know. Para kasabutan, ano celebrate nila ne? Okay, in verse 19, let's go to verse 19. For seven days, no yeast is to be found in your houses. And anyone, whether foreigner or native born, who eats anything with yeast in it, must be cut off from the community of Israel. Ganun ka stricto ang ginoo. Kung naay mga foreigner na mga on o yeast, kailangan tang tangon. Cut off. What do you mean cut off? Siguro, they will be excluded from the camp. Um, probably worse, patyon sila or whatever. So, it, they should be cut off. No, they, they should, The Israelites should have nothing to do with them. Okay, let's go to verse 20. Eat nothing made with yeast. Wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. Verse 21. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals from your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on the sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. Itong blood on the doorpost, this symbolizes no, that these Israelites are placing themselves under the protection of God. By faith, no, by faith, they put themselves under the protection of God. And if you notice, yung, yung blood will be put on top and on the sides. So, diba, when you look at the cross, the top, and sides. Diba? So, yun. Parang it also symbolizes the cross. No? Okay, let's go to verse 23. When the, when the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, He will see the blood on the top and sides of the doorframe and will pass over that doorway. And He will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Verse 24. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. Verse 25. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as He promised, observe this ceremony. 26. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bow down and worship the Lord. Ito yung mga festival nila. This is going to be a lasting ordinance being practiced from generations to gener generations. Today, the Jews also do this. They, they, have, a, they have this book, Haggadah. Um, mer lang book, they call it Haggadah. They read the book, and the book contains uh, the, past, the Exodus story and the Passover story. And napo dito ang sa hagada yung mga menu menu nila yung seder meal. Kasi there, there is a certain order that they must eat, no? Okay, let's go to verse 28. The Israelites did what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. Verse 29. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the first, firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and the firstborn of all the livestock of all the livestock as well verse 30 pharaoh and all his officials and all the egyptians got up during the night and there was loud wailing in egypt for there was not a house without someone dead you know the passover has a very deep meaning no very deep meaning um, the lamb was used um, as an offering for sin. Remember, the Egyptians and the Israelites, para para sila sinners, no? Nakasala sila sa ginoo. The, the Egyptians, they tried to kill the Hebrew ba babies. So, judgment na sa ginoo. And then, but that night, the Lord provided a way for them to be saved through the blood of the Lamb. Okay? And, only the Israelites believe, had faith. So, sila ang naka-follow naka sa instruction ng ginoo. Whereas, ang mga Egyptians, wala nila gisunod, namatay ang ilang firstborn son. And magtingala mo, why firstborn son? 
Because ang firstborn son, uh, in the Bible, the firstborn son belongs to the Lord. So, may, may, mayroong special right ang ginoo sa mga firstborn son uh, na mubu, siya mubuot sa iyang gusto buhaton. No? That's how, how it is. No? Dako ang significance na place ng Bible over firstborn sons. Okay. So, in verse 31, during the night, so, gitawag ni Pharaoh si Moses and Aaron and said, up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go Worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds as you have said and go and also bless me. So, wala na mahimo si Pharaoh. Nahadlok na yod. So, in the middle of the night, gipatawag sila, hawa na mo. Hawa na mo. Then in verse 33, the Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country. So, tanan, all the Egyptians are telling them, come on, hawa na mo, gipahawa sila. For otherwise, they said, we will all die. So, the great fear of the Lord had fallen on the Egyptians. Verse 34. So, the people took their dough before the yeast was added and carried it on their shoulders in kneading throws wrapped in clothing. Verse 35. The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people and they gave them what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. So magtingala mo, gikaw, ano ba yan? Gikawatan ng mga Israelites ang mga Egyptians? Well, actually, it's not really that. Okay, remember, the, the Jews were slaves for 430 years. So, kani ang kabayaran sa ilang mga sahod. No? So, they plundered the Egyptians. Gikuha ang mga jewelry, tanan. Tanan, tanan. Okay. In verse 37, the Israelites journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot. There were 600,000 men on foot besides women and children. So, 600,000 men. Wala pa apil ang babae o mga bata. So, the, the scholars estimate there, there were around 2 million Israelites who went out of Egypt. 2 million from how many? 70. 70, no? Nung family ni Jacob, 12 sons niya, mga anak nila, there were only 70, 70. After 430 years, ni daghan kaayo mga Israelites. So, parang na murag daghan, nagkakayo, no? Kay, di ba, remember in Exodus 1, Pharaoh was threatened, ni daghan mga Israelites. So, ang gibuhat niya, iyang gi persecute. But because of the persecution, samut ni daghan. So, <laughs> Nitabang si Pharaoh sa pagpagdaghan ng mga Israelites. So, you know, very amazing, no? Very amazing. Okay, in verse 38, many other people went up with them and also large droves of livestock, both flocks and herds. Many other people went up with them. So, meaning, dili lang mga Jews ang ni hawa sa Exodus, as ni hawa sa Egypt. So, it means that siguro may mga foreigners, may mga Egyptians, mga who believe in the Lord, or di na sila ganahan dito sa Egypt. Kay hadlok sila pati basin, unsa, madamay sila, baka patyon sila, patyon matanan mga Egyptians, no? Ni, ni sunod sila. They became followers, no? Of Yahweh. So, they left with the Israelites. But, but we will learn later on na kani mga foreigners, sila ang naging reason nga, no? nag backslide among Israelites because these foreigners brought with them their foreign gods. So, ito yung naka naka maot sa mga Israelites. So, let's go to verse 39. With the dough the Israelites had brought from Egypt, they baked loaves of unleavened bread. The dough was without yeast because they had been driven out of Egypt and did not have time to prepare food for themselves. Verse 40, now the length of time the Israelite people live in Egypt was 430 years. 430 years. Let's recall, in Genesis 15, 13, and 16, giyong nang ginoo that uh, uh, the Lord warned Abraham in advance that your descendants will be in a foreign land for 400 years. So siguro, at that time, gi summarize, uh, gi estimate lang ng ginoo, but but the Israelites were 
in Egypt for 430 years. And uh, uh, 430 years, okay? And scholars date the, the, the time of slavery of the Israelites between 1876 B.C. to 1446 B.C. So, itong Exodus uh, and uh, the time that the Israelites were in Egypt, these are part of history. Part of history. Although, wala tayong makita sa history books ng Egypt. Malamang gitang-tang na nila sa history books nila. But we believe in the Bible. We believe that this really happened. Okay? Okay, let's go to verse 43. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, These are the regulations for the Passover meal. No foreigner may eat it. Why? Ngano bawal ang foreigner? Kasi remember, when they partake of the Passover meal, they, they are as if they are affirming the covenant between God and Israel, the Israelites. No? So, so, since they are not part of the covenant people, dapat dili sila pwede magpartake sa Passover. So, if, you're, you don't, if you are not a believer, so dapat dili sa appeal. I think the same is true with yung Holy Communion nato, no? Because Paul warned that itong communion nato should not be taken lightly. Dapat ang mga believers lang. And dapat, dili lang believers, dapat makasabot yung ka sa significance ng uh, communion. So, dili lang basa-basa mga on because uh, it's not designed that way. It is a covenant, no? Covenant. Verse 44, Any slave you have bought may eat it after you have circumcised him. But a temporary resident or a hard worker may not eat it. So a slave, kasi a slave is considered part of the family. So may, may slavery sa una. And then you have to circumcise him because ang circumcision, kani ang parang sinyales, the sign that they are part of the covenant. Okay. Verse 46, It must be eaten inside the house. Take none of the meat outside the house. Do not break any of the bones. The whole community of Israel must celebrate it. So nakabutang dere, dapat dili pwede na you should not break any of the bones. Why? Because remember, the Passover lamb must be perfect. And we know that Jesus uh, was perfect and blemished. Wala na, na, wala na broken yung mga bukog ni Jesus. Because you can see in John 19 verse 32, John, the soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man, the thief, okay, who, who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break the legs of Jesus. Can they fulfill the requirement sa Exodus that the Passover lamb must be perfect, that the bones must be unbroken? So, grabe, no? Um, so, Jesus is really the Passover lamb. No? Okay, let's go to verse 48. A foreigner residing among you who wants to celebrate the Lord's Passover must have all the males in his household circumcised. Then he may take part like one born in the land. No uncircumcised male may eat it. The same law applies both to the native born and to the foreigner residing among you. So, pati mga foreigner kailangan mag-circumcise to show that they want to be part of the covenant between Abraham and the Israelites. And then in verse 50, all the Israelites did just what the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. And on that day, and on that very day, the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt by their divisions. So that is the end of chapter 12. Okay, let's connect itong Passover with Jesus sa New Testament. Diba, sa first covenant, God instituted the Passover meal. So dapat mga on sila Passover meal. Jesus instituted a new covenant Ito yung Last Supper. That is why we celebrate the Holy Communion. To remember what He had done on the cross. So, may connection yung first Passover sa Egypt o ang last Passover ni Jesus. There's a connection between the two of them. So, the first Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Diba ingon ni Jesus in Luke 22 verse 20? This 
cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Okay. Now the question is, why did God require Jesus to die before He could save us? Kasi remember, daghan mga pilosopo, no? Gano kailangan mamatay pa si Jesus? Diba child abuse yan? Na ipapatay niya yung anak? Diba? If God wants to save us, why don't He just save all of us? That's the, ano, that's the thinking of the unbelievers. But it's important that we should understand. Because, you know, God's ways are different than our ways. And for God, dapat na ay shedding of blood. Because in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, ingun, ingun sa, sa, sa Old Testament, for the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. So, unsay pasabot ane? It is the blood of the animal which will atone or which will uh, pay as a punishment for our sins. So, every time nakasala ta, there should be shedding of blood. That is why in the Old Testament, the ghan kay mga lamb ng ipang patay, especially during Passover, uh, Joseph was uh, recorded around uh, to, um, around 200 plus thousand of lambs being slaughtered in one event in Jerusalem. Ah, nakadaghan. So, grabe daghan kayo. And, and uh, just imagine, di ba, after they slaughter the lamb, they will have to pour the blood on the altar. And literally, ang altar will flow with so much blood. So much blood. And that is God's design. But nowadays, the Jews celebrate Passover uh, change nila, na wala na'y, wala na'y blood. Wala na'y blood sacrifice karon. Kasi ang reasoning nila, wala na may temple. Kasi the temple is now occupied by the, the, the Dome of the Rock. No? The temple, God's temple. Uh, kasi diba, we have two temples. The temple, the first temple, na, which, which was built by Solomon, and then uh, it was destroyed. And then the second temple was rebuilt by Nehemiah and uh, rebuilt by the efforts of Nehemiah and Ezra. And then this one, giguba po na mga, ano, mga, I think mga Muslim, and then ang nabili na lang yung wall, wailing wall. And then on that same place, uh, gibuilt ng mga Muslims yung dome of the rock. So that's, that is why today, they don't sacrifice lambs anymore. But they celebrate Passover. But uh, sa, sa panahon karon, the, the Jews find Blood sacrifice, repulsive. Parang, uh, sila ganahan. But that is God's original design. Kaya that you, you'll be wondering, unsa may ang kapatawaran ng mga sala ng mga Israel, Israelites karon? Wala. Because the Bible says, without shedding the blood, there is no forgiveness. But God has already provided Jesus. Alam mo, nindot kayo timing ni Jesus because Jesus came here while the second temple was standing. While well, well, the second temple was standing, because in AD 70, I think, um, he conquer ang Jerusalem, and then I think he destroy ang temple. So, wala na means ang mga tao, mga Israelites, to offer blood sacrifices. So, how will they be saved? The answer is, Jesus in AD 33, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He is the Passover lamb. So all we have to do is to believe in Him. And the problem is, a lot of Jews have missed it. They have missed their Messiah. Okay? They have missed their Messiah. So makita na to, ang blood is very, very important in redemption work of God and in sacrifice. And then, um, yung death of the Egyptian, first Egyptian firstborn and the blood of the Lamb, may mga symbolism ito. It symbolizes that God owns the firstborn. God wants the firstborn. That's why in the Bible, um, gikoman ng mga Israelites uh, sa Leviticus that ang mga firstborn sons, i-redeem nila, palit, buy back nila. And then mga animals nila, mga donkey, they have to redeem it with lamb. Kung dili, they have to break the neck, neck of the donkey. Okay? And then ang first fruits nila, kailang ihalad sa ginoo. Because the Lord wants the first, everything first. So, ito yung significance. Because to the Lord, uh, the firstborn is His by right. 
So sabi ni Lord in Exodus 22:29, you must give me the firstborn of your sons. So when, pero huna huna ni, some may, may think, di ba God was so cruel? Why He killed the Egyptian firstborn? Well, He's God. God was sending a message to the Egyptians. Anyway, they have they 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 were all sinners. They're they're like a parosan sa ilang mga sala. Okay? But that is how God works, no? And then in Exodus, the reason why God uh, redeemed the Israelites, kasi sabi ng Bible, God considers the Israelites his firstborn, young firstborn sons. So the Israelites as a whole, they were redeemed by the death of the firstborn of the Egyptians. Kasi ang ginugod, uh, bef- kumbaga, the Israelites are his, kailangan ipaliton niya using another uh, people or another animal, something like that. Okay? Ito yung sabi na, ano, um, uh, substitution, substitution. That is why, in the Old Testament, every year, God would require the high priest to make a sacrifice as a, uh, of a lamb as a sin offering for the entire people. Once a year, musulod ang high priest to the Holy of Holies. And that's the only time that he can enter into the Holy of Holies for the forgiveness of all sins. But the problem is, the Bible says that no amount of blood of bulls and goats can take away the sins. Hebrews 10.14 Bisan unsa pakadaghan ng mga animals ang patyon, they will not take away the sins. Kasi they have to do it every year, annually. But now, because of the death of Jesus, once and for all, pinaagi sa iyang dugo, okay? pinaagi sa iyang dugo, we are, uh, Jesus became the substitute. He became the sacrifice for us so that whoever believes in Him will not perish but will have eternal life. Jesus is the Passover lamb. He was perfect. He was without blemish. He was without sin. And, and the, the good thing is, ito, interestingly, si Jesus namatay siya during the Passover, uh, uh, before the Passover sacrifice. Kasi ang, ang buhatan niya, diba, they will have to kill the lamb. And at the time nagipangpatay nila ang mga lamb, si Jesus namatay. So, timing kaayo yung pagkamatay ni Jesus. And then, this is what we call the doctrine of substitutionary atonement. Alam ko medyo, medyo te- theological, but we need to understand this. So that when people ask you, nga no kailangan mamatay si Jesus para, para mapasailo ta? Nga no, dili na lang ta pasailuan, just like that. Jesus shed His blood for our sins. Kasi supposedly, kita ang dapat mamatay. But He took our place on the cross. Instead of kita ang mamatay, Siya ang mamatay. The blood of Jesus is very precious. It's very precious. Why? Because that's the blood of the only begotten Son of God. So, hindi, it's very costly for the Lord to let His Son die. That is why dapat we should not take the cross lightly. We should not take the sacrifice of Jesus very, very lightly. Yung, yung the system of substitutionary atonement, you can see that sa panahon ni Abraham. Diba? Abraham, God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, your one and only son. But in, si, si Abraham, because of faith, Gituman niya ang ginoo. But the Lord, on the last minute, told Abraham, don't do it, don't kill the boy. Because I know that you fear me. And the Lord provided a ram. Kanina lang imong i-sacrifice. Okay? Kanina lang imong sacrifice on behalf of Isaac. So in the same way, the Lord provided the sacrifice on our behalf, which is Jesus Christ. Remember, without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So, pinagi sa dugo ni Jesu Cristo, 
na ay kapatawaran sa atong sala and Jesus was the one who was killed on our behalf. When, when God saw Jesus, His Son, dying on the cross, God says, it is enough. Justice has been, my justice has been satisfied. The price for sin is fully paid. We are safe forever. Okay, so this is the rule. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. But it is not automatic. Hindi porke namatay si Jesus Christo, kita tanan, the whole world is saved. No, that does not work that way. Just like the Israelites, they have to act by faith. They have to take the blood and put it on the doorpost. In the same way, we have to appropriate that faith. How? We have to accept Him as our own personal Lord and Savior. Dabaton nato siya. Kaya kung dili nato siya dabaton, walay may tabo. Okay? It's personal. It's personal. So, don't think that anyway, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So, okay na. Okay na tayo tanan. Safe na ta. That does not work that way. Because we are saved by grace through faith. Just like the Israelites, by faith, they put the blood on the doorpost. Kita, by faith, we have to accept the Lord Jesus as our own personal Lord and Savior. So next week, as we celebrate Good Friday, so remember, anong significance, bakit kailangan siya mamatay? He is the Passover lamb. There is no forgiveness if there is no shedding of the blood. Dapat nay mamatay. And kanindot ana, ang bugtong anak ng Diyos, siya na mismo ang nag-substitute sa ato ah. Just like God providing the ram for Abraham to sacrifice, God Himself provided Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And it is not true that child abuse ang gibuhat ng ginoo. Why? Because Jesus Himself, pumayag siya, willingly, He willingly gave Himself up for us because He also loved us. Now, if Jesus loved us, what must we do? We must obey Him. We must obey Him. So, ito yung summary ng, ano, ng salvation story ng Christianity. It's not about you. We cannot save ourselves. No, It's all about what the Lord did. He died on the cross for our sins. We have to accept Him as our own personal Lord and Savior. Amen? Okay. So, let us... Uh, Stand up and pray. Well, if you have uh, accepted the Lord Jesus as your own personal Lord and Savior, then, then it's okay. But if not, karon na nakasabot na mo, na inhana di ay, that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was very, very costly to God the Father. Masyadong mahal. Very costly. We should not take it very lightly. God is offering you a chance to be His Son. You should not take it very lightly. Wherever you are, if you are listening to this message, the Lord is touching your heart. Today, if I knock if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Let me in. Let me in. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. Indeed, kamo ang Passover lamb namo. Salamat, Lord. As we celebrate, as we remember what you have done on the cross, the following week. May we remind that of your great love, of your great sacrifice for us. If you do not have Jesus in your heart and you want to accept Him, follow this prayer after me. Dear God, forgive me for all my sins. Ginoo, pasay luwa ko sa akong mga I cannot save myself. For the wages of sin is death. 
Kaya kabayaran sa akong mga sala ay kamatayon. But thanks be to Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. Salamat sa imong bugtong anak na namatay sa, sa cross alang sa akong sala. Because of His blood, I am saved. Pinaagi siyang dugo, ako pwede maluwas. I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my own personal Lord and Savior. Akong idawat ka Heso Kristo, isip akong Diyos ug manluluwas. Help me, Lord, to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Tabangi ko ginoo na mabuhi para kanimo, para sa imong himaya. Change me, Lord. Mold me day by day to be more like you. Tabangi mi Lord, na mahimo ko parehas kanimo. Father, I just want to commit to you, your children, Lord, as we celebrate and remember what you have done. That may we always reflect and be very, very grateful and not to take the cross lightly. For it is, for the cross is the power. It is the gospel, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I pray for your people that we will be strengthened kung kamo if you did not spare your son to die on the cross for our sins how much more you're going to help us in all that we are experiencing kasakabulong mi Lord bisat unsa pa'y problema na maabot sa mong kinabuhi kami imong tabangan kay kung ang anak nga ninyo dili ninyo gi gi withhold sa amua how much more you're going to help us in all our troubles salamat o Diyos Increase our faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say, Amen.